The views and comments expressed on the following radio program by its hosts and their guests do not necessarily reflect the views of rmconair.com or its affiliates. Listener discretion is advised. All my niggas smoke, all my niggas smoke. 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 Good. Uh, all my niggas smoke that potent, and you niggas swimming in Frank's ocean. Bitch niggas lose track while I obtain focus, smoking on some sticky that's greener than a flying low. I'm high as fuck. Oops, I mean I'm fucking high. I'm smoking on that sleeper. It was sing your ass a lullaby. I will be getting up. I have a house right above the sky. Smoking, chilling with my dogs, but I'm no family guy. God, God, God damn, I'm high. Going up, no elevator. Spider sense these fucking haters and slicing dice, no lightsaber. Breaking down the loud like it's barriers along the vision and multiplying my high percentage. Number one rule, sky's the limit. My flow so vivid and your style is blemish. Either way it go, watch the we replenish. All my niggas smoke, we like the mind stars with weed up in it. <laughs> yeah. So let me light up the dope and go and get a O. Go and get the hoes, get the bros. Tell the fuck niggas get low, cuz. All my niggas smoke, all my niggas smoke. Good. All my niggas smoke, all my niggas smoke. Good. All my niggas smoke, all my niggas smoke. All my niggas smoke, all my niggas smoke Cush all in my lungs, making me feel like I can't breathe Smoking on this coral reef, but it's not from under the sea Smoking strong and it's potent If you ain't choking, then you ain't smoking You would think I was chilling in the boat The way you see me floating I can't drown, I can't drown I'm surrounded by a cloud Smoking LB by the ounce And OZ's by the pound I'm breaking it down, I'm breaking it down Mo blunts is what I'm about to roll Got the cush, got the perp, even got the drove Feel it so deep all in my soul Smoking on this morphine Can't fuck with ibuprofen Hit it once, had me stuck You thought I was frozen, but I'm not I'm just token Cush smell good like lotion And if you smoking good loud Let's go on and make a toast then Cause All my niggas smoke 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 All my niggas smoke, all my niggas smoke. 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 Good. All my niggas smoke, all my niggas smoke Good. So let me light up the dope and go and get a O Go and get the hoes, get the bros Tell the fuck niggas get low cuz Could smell good like lotion And if you smoking good loud Let's go on and make a toast then cuz All my niggas smoke, all my niggas smoke Good. All my niggas smoke, all my niggas smoke Girl. All my niggas smoke, all my niggas smoke. Is the record stuck? All my niggas smoke. All my <laughs> you say is the record stuck? <laughs> yeah. How many smoke. times has he said all my, all my niggas smoke. smoke? That's all I done heard. All my smoke. <laughs> okay, so I was just asking uh, Kiara, is the record stuck? Hey, fifty one fifty uh found a way to make it back this week. <laughs> uh, talk this shit. Yeah. Say what we say. Uh who was that singing? Uh I think that was four twenty. That's the name of the record, I guess, in homage of Weed Day 420 by Rich and Mark Murray. Is that oh, a West Coast? Uh, I don't, uh, does it say? 
Are they? I don't know. Why don't Rich oh. or Mark Murray call in and let us know where you from, where you hail from, and what do you guys think of the record? Somebody call us. Let well, us. We know. know one motherfucking thing. What? All his niggas smoke. <laughs> All of them. <laughs> God damn it! He makes sure the world know that shit. Jeez. <laughs> Maybe we was having technical difficulties. No, all his niggas smoke. Okay. The record wasn't skipping. To the beat. Okay. All right. I think the beat was all right. It was No, nah, I'm it just was saying. Melodic. I was just trying to figure out the rest of it, you know. I just know it's way easier to rap today than it was 10, 15 years ago. Really? I yeah. think dude, yeah, I think dudes was a little better back then. Yeah. Uh, better diversity, better artists, you know. Like who, though? Like, it's it's always those people with the easy hooks. That's what I call them. They got the hook. It's catchy. Rakim, KRS, Chuck D, Public Enemy, you know. But just, you're calling out, like, elites. That's what game. I mean. That's what I Biggie, Tupac, Nas, Jay-Z. But, but you're saying all the people who... Uh, who are like they stood out where they will be remembered. But what about the guys nobody remember? Like, who the hell is that? That's that my baby dad? Nobody, nobody, ain't nobody, ain't nobody even thought about him no more, see? But I remember that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you know I mean? Who the hell is that? That's that my baby dad? They, got, they had that type of rap all mm. the time. So. They, they had their time, right? <laughs> no, it's always going to be somebody like that where it's like their song is. It's, it's catchy when well, you be like fucking get that shit a chance, but it's not, it's not, it's not, uh, it's not deep lyrically, or or right. the lyrics don't come in abundance. But that's definitely a get high record. You could you could listen to that and be smoking with your niggas. Yeah, and it would mean something to you. Like that's the ideal song for for doing what? Smoking, <laughs> smoking, <laughs> nothing else. <laughs> So that was a pretty good record. Y'all keep sending in the records. We appreciate it. Yeah. You know, hit us up. Yeah. Uh, whatever. The, what's the email address? I don't know that shit. You know it. Corey Holcomb Show 5150 at gmail.com. Get at us. So, Corey, um, in news that people might be interested in, Chad Ochocinco Johnson uh, was in court uh, the other day, actually on, I guess, Monday or uh, Friday. In front of a female uh, Caucasian judge, and he patted uh, his lawyer on his behind after it was initially decided that he was going to get to walk out of the same door that he came in, as opposed to the door he ended up exiting mm. out of in mm. handcuffs. And um, there's been a lot of conversation in all the different media platforms about whether or not that could have been prevented or well, what did you who think? was at fault. I think, a lot of people saw it. Right. I personally think, having been locked up a few times, that the last thing you should ever do is forget the word discretion of a judge. Because he was out the door till he patted that brother, uh, his lawyer, on his behind. And dark as he is, and that white woman looked at him and said, I heard about you. You think I'm playing. And I want to get on television. Because people just, you know, everybody wants their 15 minutes, including lawyers and mm-hmm. judges mm-hmm. and everybody else. And I think that he miscalculated the price of freedom. And as a result... What is the price right of freedom, though? The like price that? of freedom is you got to know what the discretion of a judge means. It means that you can be right and still go to jail. Because she really didn't have to send him to jail. She could have just uh, chastised him and said, you know what? Uh, that gesture that you just made, although it's not illegal, it's contemptful to me. And I don't want you to ever do that in my courtroom again. Instead, she took the power that she has as a judge and, and ratcheted up that that act, that act that he committed to a punishable offense and gave him 30 days. What do you think, Zoe? Uh, I just think America is hell-bent on taming the black man in every aspect of society. Mm-hmm. He tapped his his... his Lawyer on the ass, like a football player or basketball player, whatever. At the end of the day, that's contemptible in court. What law did he break? And how are you disrespected by that action? But it's just like, take a Ron Artest in the NBA. Once you've set a precedent for being wayward or wild or labeled as disrespectful, now, even when you're doing benign shit that ain't even nothing, they got this knee-jerk reaction to say, we need to tame you. We need to control you. So look at how many fouls did Ron Artest get just because he's Ron Artest? Or how many fouls or technicals did Dennis Rodman get 
because he got the label of this motherfucker's wild or this something's wrong with him. Now Chad Ochocinco is experiencing the same shit. It's tame black man time in America. Yeah. And you can see that happening. So I'm so glad that I, I, I get to say something about this shit. Um, Paris Hilton got caught with cold motherfucking cane. <laughs> Cocaine yeah. <laughs> on a number of motherfucking occasions. And this bitch ain't seen no motherfucking bars. So here's this man in court. And this bitch got mad because people laugh. She's a very insecure bitch, this bitch. I don't even know the bitch, but I'm looking at this bitch judge. I'm glad I get to say bitch in America. I know they're going to come get me one day. At some point, one it's going to be gonna, over. <laughs> one day they're going to fuck with me. I already know that. <laughs> Chad Ochocinco doesn't have a long police record. He got into it with the bitch that everybody know is a real loud mouth motherfucker who run up on and try people. Yeah. So when I see somebody just go to jail for nothing, I mean, this man got playing football was his profession. Mm -hmm. When he hit his lawyer on the ass, like I like 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 you said, Bobby, she could have said, "Okay, in my courtroom, I won't have that." Mm -hmm. Envy. Is what happened to Chad Ochocinco. Mm -hmm. When you are ever standing in front of somebody Caucasian and your freedom depends on what they think, you don't have to hit your lawyer on the ass. You can just look a certain way and you won't see the streets if it's up to them. Because it's kind of like, we can't really punish you this, you know, enough. I heard niggas saying shit like, that's what he get. That's, I'm like, really? That's what he get? <laughs> what did he do? Well, well, he did He did nothing illegal, like you said, Zoe. Yeah, he did. He showed up. What did he do illegal, Bobby? He forgot he was black in America. And that's illegal. Everything ain't got to be on the books, man. I don't um, agree with that. They used to uh, lynch black people in my lifetime for reckless eyeballing. And it wasn't an official crime. But you could get lynched and nobody would be tried for nothing because the word on the street was when you go downtown, look straight ahead or at the ground. But and, whatever you do, don't look. And no there's still are a lot of people who are trained mm -hmm. like that, which is why they feel Ocho Cinco was a bad man in court. Right. But and look, all he did was what he did to get paid. As a man, he make money tapping people on the ass. That's what he do. They hit their teammates. Yeah. But not in court. Right. Not in this woman court. Where's that at? Right. But no, as I said, it's not a written rule. But, but you know what's well, so, you know why what's is so, he in jail then? Because but, he's black and he a, a Caucasian, the worst thing in the world. A Caucasian woman. Wow, <laughs> shit. Judge determine whether he walk out that door. And, and if we, I walk in listen, a courtroom and I see a Caucasian woman as my judge, I know I'm in trouble because I trouble. ain't no two-bob-ass motherfucker. <laughs> two-bob. That bitch going to be like, this motherfucker is looking straight. <laughs> this motherfucker look proud. Now, Lock that motherfucker up. I know I'm in trouble. And, and listen, we're living in a time where the conviction of Zimmerman isn't a shoe-in. It ain't going to happen. The conviction of this dude who killed that little boy because he had on a hoodie and some Arizona and some Skittles, right? Oh, he's a bad guy. Let's paint him in this way. Let's paint him that way. We're living in a society where some people can get the fuck off based on their color. And this dude taps his 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 his, his uh, lawyer on the ass and gets sent to jail. That's well, why I come can't on understand why people are scared to speak up on what the fuck they know is foul. Like, I talk bad about the gay marriage shit. And I get people on Twitter saying to me, oh, you gonna, they going to get you and all that shit. I'm like, man, they going to get me anyway. So I'm going to speak on what I feel to be foul. Uh, what your boyfriend ate should not be in the front of your drawers, nigga. Well, That's you know, what I got to say about back, that. But back to this issue at hand and, and, and the price of freedom. Dookie front ass nigga. The price of freedom. Didn't nobody even protest the gay parade. They so scared to protest gay. Well, <laughs> well we, I ain't fucking with them. We really got some I lose far my more, job. We got far more serious issues. We didn't even establish our, our, our right to be treated equally as, as human beings. And I look at that situation with Chad on both sides. And having been in front of a judge and had to make my mind up, now, am I going to show him the man that I am and go to jail I'm going to get up and say, Your Honor, sir, uh, you're absolutely right. Uh, I do want to go home and look at my references 
There are people who say that I'm going to do more on the outside and be a credit to society if you take that discretion that you have. And when you use that word, they know that they ain't got to pound you. But I don't seen brothers get in front of a judge, flashing gang sign, and get an extra 20 years. Well, and, and, and Cinco. Because Ocho Cinco, they got sentencing guidelines. But Ocho Cinco probably looks like the reincarnation of O.J., he is the real. They reincarnation probably feel like they shit. probably feel like okay, you got off with a slap on the wrist. We not gonna let this happen again. I just feel like we 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 not really hitting it on the home run level. When you are a black man in court, it ain't good for you. It just ain't. <laughs> they built them buildings to be filled by your ass. Okay. <laughs> they gonna get you in them motherfuckers one way or another. Whether it's your child being born. You can go to jail for having a child when you're a nigga. Wow. <laughs> but if you're a black man, if you're them a black builders, man. Them builders was built to be filled. For niggas. By but, chocolate motherfuckers. But a black Damn. man can walk free if his lawyer is Johnny Cochran. Because Johnny Cochran used their law and jury nullification for the first time in the history of American jurisprudence to the benefit of... Of a Negro person, because OJ is not black and never was black. I anyway. say this though: your lawyer decides what happens to you in a lot of these big states. Your lawyer, your lawyer's um, friendship with the judge decides what happens to you. Well, but it's, it's Johnny not really... Cochran. Johnny Cochran did a great job as a lawyer. He was mm-hmm. the best trial attorney in America. That's why OJ got out. wasn't about no friendship. He took that. A jury on a ride that they wanted to go on. I wouldn't say he's the best trial attorney. Like you just say, it's a fact. I think he's a, a great, fact. a great trial attorney. But they had a lot of blacks in that jury. But you know, and what? they saw that bullshit ass case that mm-hmm. the LAPD mm-hmm. had against OJ. OJ didn't have this. This is what makes Johnny Cochran stand out. Mm-hmm. Shapiro was the head lawyer. Ready to plead out for some bullshit. Because <laughs> he didn't want to lose friends. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. Johnny Cochran put his law degree on the line mm. speaking the truth in the courtroom. That's not how it go in courtrooms. It don't matter right or wrong. The it best matters, story wins. Right. How it you matters, spin it. It matters if you black. Yeah. Well, yeah. No, you don't ma- beat no murders on Caucasian people when you black, whether you did it or not. Well, he did. And remember oh, he did. this. Remember this That's about. That's another thing. You say he did it. Was you there? <laughs> no, but the dog was. <laughs> right, that's what I'm saying. People. The dog was there. The dog would have bit the shit out of a stranger. That's an Akita, an attack dog. That dog was hollering at the moon. Ooh, I don't know who to bite. OJ or uh, Nicole. Oh my God. Ooh. Let's let's not let's not forget the facts here. A lawyer, any lawyer, a public defender or a prosecutor, they're all uh, officers of the court. And eat no matter how good your lawyer is. If the judge tells your lawyer, shut the fuck up and sit down, he got to do it. Stop defending this motherfucker. He got to do it. Well, that's what they wanted to tell that's Johnny Cochran. Is. But Johnny Cochran, for whatever reason, he did it. And it worked out good for him. He put his reputation on the line going into a courtroom challenging the LAPD for real. Not talking around it, because I know how it go in he the courtroom. He did go at they neck. You don't get justice <laughs> in a courtroom. You get a plea. Mm. <laughs> That's mm. what niggas get. You, if you got some money, you could get a plea. You can eventually, they'll be like, okay, well, we won't lock him up forever, but if he signed that house over here to us, uh, we'll let him see the streets in about five to ten years. Wow. That's how it go in a courtroom. A courtroom is a motherfucking pool hall. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the bottom line is, you get what you pay for. Uh, to beat that case cost OJ $10 million because he bought, uh, what's the phrase they use? Uh, uh, reasonable doubt. Well, yeah. Law, uh, for listen, sale. Justice, is is like, for sale. justice yeah. is like any other thing in America. It's a yeah. commodity. If you can afford it, you can get yeah. justice. When if Dr. Lee got, got up there, uh, Dr. Lee testified for a week about his credentials. Oh, no, 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 no. Blood not right. Blood not right. Blood not right. And you, these gloves don't fit. You must have quit. Johnny started rhyming like he was on the counter, and yeah. I mean, we wanted to hear that shit too, boy. He said the shit that that the that the people and the jury was like, "You got damn right." But everybody is leaving out the fact that this crooked ass cop made the case very easy for OJ to get off. That crooked ass cop with his 
fucked up bullshit Evan bullshit evidence planting ass. And this happens all the time, ladies and gentlemen. It's just most motherfuckers don't have the money to fight a case. That's it. That's what I'm saying. You buy you buy justice in this country, man. We gotta take a break. We'll mm. be back. The number is 323-965-1600. That's the number. Holla at us in 2.2. 5150, we'll be back. in there too I mean yeah. uh, some, some harmony and shit you know what? who is that man that was sh- the record is called Shine by Cool C Brown that was fly I actually think, I think to, like to break into the game you, you, need, a, a you need a tune like that some shit that's catchy yeah, yeah. that's saying something too he had me thinking a little bit I, yeah. I like that that was yeah, cool yeah. That's did you I, hear what he said Corey? what was he talking about no, I ain't hear shit he said. But I was just saying it was, <laughs> I was catchy. Listening. I could listen to it. Yeah, I it was that. Yeah. I figure out what he's saying later. And that's why I said that, because like if it's catchy, people will listen to it and eventually get yeah. into you. Right, yeah. right. Well, you yeah. know what? I'm embarrassed to say, man. I just really got up on Sugar Free. Oh, this Sugar past Free. Week. Damn. <laughs> Who is that? Man, let me tell you something, man. Sugar Free is a rapper you might like. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll put okay, it like that. Okay, he's right. really a performer. 
And then you ask right, me. You're right. Then I, li- I like a performer. No, he yeah. cold too. His lyrics. I mean, he. he I love he Sugar Free. I've yeah. been downloading this shit since I motherfucking yeah. my homeboy uh, Scope Bubbles in the letter. Oh, okay. Put me yeah. on to her. Yeah, I, I met him before. Well, not really met him. One day he was at a comedy show and he spoke. It was just a lot of people around him, so we probably ain't talk like we would have. But mm-hmm. um, when I heard his music, I, I was like, okay, yeah, this is my type of guy. Mm-hmm. Well, you you said the key word performer because when they lost me, when people had to go to pay to go to a show and do all the work, everybody say yo, everybody do this, everybody well, nigga, what the hell are you gonna do? Everybody say yo. You remember them show where they wave your hands and say ass? ho, all of that, whatever, man. Okay, okay. that might get you thirty days in jail in front of the wrong judge, <laughs> <laughs> in front of some bitch judge, <laughs> some bitch. I'm a judge. Yeah, damn, Corey. But Corey, in the they F- coming for us, man. In the, hey, man, they gonna come for you anyway, man. In, in the, in the, <laughs> one way or another, motherfucker, there ain't nothing stable in this world. They coming for your ass. That's real. In Unless the, you do like Barack, we got them. <laughs> In the interest of time, Corey, you you gave a brother an opening last week uh, when he talked uh, briefly about blacks in the military, and it, it set off something in you. Can you tell me why you wanted to come back to this as a, a theme for this week's show? Well, last week, the brother didn't really get a chance to say what he was saying. All right. I know is he was in the military. Mm-hmm. He said, I'm in the military, and I, I, I don't bite my tongue when I say uh, the military is no place for African American male. Why? Because they give you orders to do the same things to other people that they did to you. That's Muhammad Ali's argument. It's really a scandalous, scandalous thing that it's a whole bunch of black people in Iraq fucking people up on some orders of the same people that did that shit to you. So really the question is, can a black man truly be proud to defend America, when America has never really given two shakes of a fat rat's ass about him? I think that's the question. It reminds me of the people who said, Chad Ocho Single, he should have went to jail. Once you get, if you beat somebody upside the head enough, they're going to be like, hey, you know what? I need to do what this motherfucker say. And every, every black man who I see in the airport with that military outfit on, it's like I don't, I, I don't, I don't. I'm not don't proud of that. Him? I'm not proud of what you've hmm. done. I mean, I don't know why you there. It's not for me to say why you there, but you can't stand up here with a United States military outfit on and say I'm doing the right thing. So let me ask this: <laughs> Is the military the new McDonald's for the black man? In other words, does it provide the best opportunity for employment and education? So maybe that's the new job source for black men. They're outside of every inner city high school recruiting them, right? When I go go to the Galleria Mall, I don't see U.S. Army recruiting stations. Too many Caucasian people over there for that. They don't play that. They kids don't do that. All uh, uh, that 27%, they kids don't fight for this country like that. Mm, mm. (laughs) But when you go to the poor part of town, Mm -hmm. It's full of let's get these motherfuckers and get them in this army, make them feel like this is the alternative to going to jail. So if you're of a lower class, regardless of race, then the military might be your best option to take care of yourself and family. Well, some people do that. A lot of people, a lot of people say, "Hey, uh, I'm gonna go join the army because I ain't had nothing else to do financially." Wow, wow! Didn't shit else work out? I tried to make right. a rap album. Might as well get in the army now. Might well go shoot these motherfuckers for these people that that, that, that slaughtered mine. <laughs> we would love to hear from proud African American military brothers. Call in and let us know about your experience in the military and if you're being taken care of. 323-965-1600. Get at us right now. Well, we got some people hot on the line. You want to take a few calls, Corey? Yeah, we can. Let's let's do that. Let's let's see what people have to say. Um, This is the 5150 show. You're on the air. Who's calling? Yo, what up, Corey? This uh, is Lowe from ATX. Can y'all hear me? Yeah, Yeah, what's up? Loud and clear. Uh, What's going on, Ken? Hey, I don't know if you remember me, but I called in about two, three weeks ago and, uh, I was like, y'all, what's up with the uh, the email address to send the um, the the beats to? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And they switched it up on me, man. They switched it from the um, a new look of myself to 
to the Corey Holcomb fifty one fifty spot. And I sent it I sent the submission in like three different times and I ain't uh I ain't heard nothing yet. And y'all been playing some some good shit and some awful shit. <laughs> and I just wanted to know <laughs> what the process go is like for selecting the beats. I'm gonna give you this email one last time, Pimp. I already got it, man. Keys already uh sent me the new email. Oh well then you straight. All you gotta do is send us the music and we'll play it at some point. Keys, do you do you know who this is? Oh, you know? I was just saying, has she... Well, he mentioned her like he knew her. Right, so no, we're going to roll I with him. Is, well, we'll, we'll get to you, brother. Uh, thanks for the call, man. Don't sweat it too much. I ain't going to bother y'all like that. But I got one more question for you, Corey. I'm a big fan of your comedy and a few other comedians, uh, Bill Burr in particular. But mm-hmm. uh, whatever happened to that dude, Rodman? You know what I'm talking about? Rodman is around. He does comedy. Um, this is a cold game, man. Um... Rodman has a lot of potential, um, but in, in the entertainment business, how talented you are means nothing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's finding a way to get to that uh, elite level where you're being seen. Mm-hmm. So Rodman is still around. Funny guy from Atlanta. Yeah, yeah. All right, cool. Appreciate the phone call, man. All well, right, respect, you. baby. Yeah, Rod Man, I know Rod Man well. He's mm. he's a funny guy. He's funny. Yeah. No, he's funny. And, 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 and the main thing I always say that really makes me respect comedians, he's original. Yeah. Very much. And he's, he's smart. He writes yeah. his own material. I mm-hmm. see a lot of guys try to act like him. But one thing about people who really stand out with what they do, when you see the original, you know that's who them motherfuckers be <laughs> yeah, trying yeah, to yeah, act yeah, like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of garbage ass comics yeah, like G yeah. Thang. I remember G Thang was doing his whole <laughs> Rod Man's whole routine. <laughs> and it works because Rod Man doesn't really have the notoriety yeah. that a lot of comedians have. Right. So he's the perfect guy that these imitators mm. prey off of because he not known enough right so when they steal his shit people don't know right. but when you see rod man perform you will see um them niggas like g thing and stuff like that that's who they was doing what's mm. what's your nickname for g thing uh i know his real name is gary johnson and he used to do nails in st louis when i first met him <laughs> <laughs> but you used to call him something uh, I, 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 G Strang. That's G what we, Strang. That's what they call him in St. Louis. I'm just saying where he's from. You call another man G Strang. Mm. Well, well, how your name G Thang, and you are the most cowardly motherfucker I've ever seen in my life. Mm. <laughs> and I put it on blast because you know what I'm saying. He done done some whole shit to me before too. But he done stole when I, some when he, when he first moved, when 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 Rob Man first moved to L.A., I saw him hanging with G Thang, and I walked right up to both of them. I was like, "How you hang with this motherfucker? This motherfucker be doing your jokes." <laughs> <laughs> and then Rob Man didn't say nothing. And when he didn't say nothing, I said, "Well, what the fuck am I saying something mm-hmm. for? Fuck wow. it. I guess they got it like that." <laughs> but one thing about L.A. This is one thing about L.A. I found out the hard way. You can't argue with motherfuckers about shit because some of these niggas be fucking each other. Wow. You be like, man, this motherfucker did you like that. But they ain't going to tell you, man, I'm fucking that nigga, man. <laughs> I care about him. Wow. <laughs> so, uh, that's Los Angeles for you, boy. I'm not talking about the hood. I'm talking about that Hollywood. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Them niggas is fucking. You know, <laughs> on um, on the um, the military issue, having served in the Navy, and when I went in in 83, uh, it shocked everybody that knew me because in my book, Real Men Don't Play, I dedicate a, a, a chapter to the Buffalo Soldiers. Mm. And that goes all the way back to uh, pre-Civil War. And, and, and what came out of the, 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 the historical understanding of our uh, uh, connection to the military, the Indians were puzzled by the soldiers with buffalo hat. And then when they heard them chains rattling, they really was perplexed. They wait, were like, wait, so it was niggas fighting in chains? Well, they still had them on their ankles, you know. <laughs> niggas uh, was fighting. They, that is some funny shit, though, well, if you really think about it. Well, you mean <laughs> slaves <laughs> fighting chained up. Get up off my master! <laughs> he gave us some soup made out of... Um, <laughs> Horse hoofs. <laughs> some horse hoof soup. <laughs> you gonna try him? And uh, some of the brothers that had escaped the uh, the plantation, they they blended into the uh, Indian population. And 
That's why you see a lot of people look like me with Indian ancestry. I got Indian in my family. Yeah. You hear that yeah. a lot. Oh, yeah, yeah absolutely. And uh, the rest of them was thinking that, you know, like Stephen, man, if I kill enough of these Indians, you know, I'm going to get a, a bigger piece of that fat back, you know. And so they were ferocious soldiers, and the Indians used to call them buffalo soldiers because they were ferocious, but they were perplexed by the fact that these brothers with them chains rattling, but coming over there messing with them. They was lost niggas, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, they was the lost. They was, they was yeah. the first gangbanger. Right. <laughs> how, <laughs> how, how vicious of a soldier you got to be to be asked to kill somebody you while you chained up. Yeah, you yeah, fight yeah. for whoever feeding you or whoever you yeah, fucking. Yeah, God yeah. damn. That is fucking insane. That conditioning is very powerful because there was a certain uh, segment of the black population that bought the uh, notion that if we do enough for these white folks, eventually they would treat us like they treat each other. The Barack and, oh, that's, Obama that's approach. That's the bougie niggas that's, today. That's, that's the Barack prevalent. Obama approach. And uh, <laughs> as you go through the progression of wars, the same thing happened. In, uh, they had a, uh, the red, uh, the race rise in 1919 after the brothers had came back from World War One, and they thought that life was going to be better because that's why they, they went to fight in World War One against the that's Germans. That's why they went to vote for Barack Obama. Go ahead. And um, they, <laughs> they came back. life was going to be better. And many of them were hung in their uniforms. <laughs> and during World wow. War Two, wow, there were so many uh, soldiers that we captured. POWs that were German soldiers and this brother that I knew that served in World War II he told me the most disheartening story he said we were coming back by train mm -hmm. and they had a, a, a compartment <laughs> full of German mm -hmm. soldiers that they fed in the best restaurants and they was getting sandwiches out the back and they were POWs and they and, and this is this is what might make some people mad but my opinion is if you are fighting for somebody who never gave you respect at all, what do you expect? Do you? I mean, like, people show you who they are. When people show you who the fuck they are, mm -hmm. if you ignore it, that's on you. Something wrong with you if you keep on trying to get um, acceptance yeah. from somebody mm -hmm. who have basically told you, you ain't worth the bubble gum on the bottom of my shoe that I stepped in some shit in. But mm -hmm. isn't that, isn't that... The sickness in the affluent black community, uh, it really manifests what uh, yeah. Einstein said about doing the same shit over and over again and hoping for a different result. Yeah. At the end of the day, how crazy is it to then turn that around and say, I'm going to fight so hard that I'm going to gain your acceptance. I know that. Fuck uh, that. I know. I, I know that. Uh, what? If if you really want to know what that's called, and, and I really want everybody to listen to me when I tell you this, that's pimping, baby. Wow. That's motherfucking pimping right there. Wow. God mm. damn it! It's some motherfucking uh, 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 pimps out here who were brilliant in their approach, but they never got credit for it. They got called an old, roll out, low down, dirty pimp. Mm -hmm. But the shit they was able to pull off was fucking amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, America is the pimp king. You dig what I'm saying? Wow. When these motherfuckers came here and slaughtered the Indians, they said, man, over there in Africa, we got some real new fools over here. <laughs> and we yeah. going to bring them over here, yes. and we going to do our thing with them. And when we through, we ain't going to have no use for them. But these motherfuckers are so trained to mm -hmm. fight <laughs> for us. Mm. I mean, goddamn. Well, I mean, let them motherfuckers go out there and do their thing then. I mean, think That's of it. That's what the fuck they do. And think of it like this, too. In the Constitution, it says the only place where slavery is legal is prison, right? That's now, that's our new slavery, prison. But most of the niggas in prison is niggas. Well. That um, should just tell you, like, you know, this is for y'all. Just like you said, the goddamn courtroom is to usher you through the process of being incarcerated. And now they know how to monetize it even better than before by privatizing prisons. So, oh, God. but motherfuckers ain't even understanding what you just said right there. That's what I'm saying. So it's like, I want to say this to anybody in the military. Sometimes when you're young, you do things without really knowing what you're doing. Right. It's, I'm sure it's a lot of young soldiers out there like, what the fuck am I doing? I mean, I'm talking about young brothers who are out of the country somewhere 
um, getting ready to shoot up a whole village of motherfucking poor people from another country. Wow. I know they saying to themselves, I'm not saying all of them, because some people loco, mm-hmm. and they just down for whatever. Mm-hmm. I get that. But I'm saying there's a lot of brothers, I'm sure, saying to themselves, wow, what the fuck am I doing out here shooting up these motherfucking people that ain't done a motherfucking thing to me? Wow. It's what? all propaganda. Because when you get out there, you see it. I know you got to see it. Man, these motherfuckers ain't fucking with us. Wow. These motherfuckers want us to leave them the fuck alone. Wow. <laughs> they really want us to get the fuck out their country, but we jacking they shit. Wow. Well, let me give you an example of what you're saying <clears throat> in terms of my own experience. I had a cousin who survived Vietnam. I had one that got killed in Vietnam. And the one that survived, he was six foot five. And he was furious because the cutoff back then was six six. And when he went to the jungles of Vietnam, because of the instruction and and the, and, the, and the sense of patriotism and this is our duty and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And he felt that way until they was out in, in the bushes one night and they had uh, speakers and they were saying, soul brother, not your war, soul brother, not your war. And he said the next day they had him out in front, the guide on. And he's the tallest one in the platoon, right? And the Vietnams had been so clever. See, people around the world know our history better than we do. And they, they asked, what are y'all doing over here, man? Y'all, we done heard about Martin Luther King. Y'all ain't got no business over here. So my cousin was out front. And he, he said he heard a, a shot that started the firefight, right? And the guy standing next to him, little white boy, about 5'9", blew his head off. And then they, was, they playing them, uh, the, the, the microphone. Soul brother, not your war. Soul brother, not your war. And as tall as he was to start the fight, they they blew his head off. But they wanted to let the brothers know, y'all really ain't got no business over here. That's they like say that, that shit they, all know? the time. When they capture him, I heard. Yeah. They, they, they be like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> um, <laughs> what the fuck are you doing fighting us? Yeah, right. What yeah. the fuck did we do to you <laughs> for you to be so proud with your little Rambo get on? Yeah, yeah. Out here like yeah. we did something to you. Right. Motherfucker, yeah. they did this shit to you. Do you know what? I think, this is what I really think. I think black people in America have really forgotten the slave trade and what really happened. I really think that they, I think that black people in America, I'm talking about the majority of black people in America, really think that they will be given equal rights eventually. And before you know it, you did. And you pass that shit on to your kids. And your kids, that he thinking, the, the day is coming. The day is coming, and also the same motherfuckers who told you the day is coming told you when you die, it's a place called paradise for your ass. Wow. And if it's the same motherfuckers with the goodest game ever. Right. I and give motherfuckers, they wickedly brilliant. And as long as I got you looking outside yourself <laughs> for validation and vindication, you can never look to yourself to get up on your own. We always working for that. Hey, he just pat me on the back. I must be one of him. And that ain't the get down. But here's the other side of that. Uh, There's a song that should be banned from all airwaves from this point forward. And it's it's the Negro, uh, uh, not the national anthem, but it's our slogan. Uh, The NAAC started that shit when I was a child. And we still waiting on someday. We shall overcome. That's got to be the sucker record of the whole motherfucking world. That's <laughs> yeah, the sucker record of the world. We ain't going to never overcome. Someday. We ain't going to never overcome until we overcome someday. our weaknesses. No, you got to turn never. someday into a date search. But you know what, Bobby? When right. you brought that song up, me with the consciousness I have now, because I haven't heard it in a while. They still if, do if it. If a every, motherfucker uh, sang that King song, I wouldn't be singing that shit. I'd be like, "What he say? <laughs> <laughs> you don't get that bullshit. The fuck just like that Bobby, that Bobby uh, McFerrin song. Yeah. McFerrin, uh, don't worry, <laughs> be happy. Boy, that song, I hated that motherfucking song. I was like, beat that nigga ass. Hey Corey, why don't you? <laughs> that nigga is violating with that motherfucking song. So I got a question for you. I was gonna ask you to make up a song, nigga. Hey, but look, I got a question for you. <laughs> what this goes, we be this goes to anybody. What y'all waiting on? That's what I want to know. Anybody right who there. wants to answer this question. When you watch sporting events, mm. especially, oh, 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 like, uh, uh, you know, the NBA finals, <laughs> what is, uh, like, what is it, Memorial Day or something like that? And they be like, yo, I just want to thank the troops. Uh, y'all out there fighting for our freedom. If it wasn't for y'all, we wouldn't be able to enjoy these freedoms we have. How do you feel when you hear people say that annoyed 
annoyed. Here's Simply because these are black guys who, but for their athletic ability, would be in situations where they would be subjected to the same kind of atrocities that you spoke of earlier. Because that's how they treat us in Chirac. They no difference between Chirac and Iraq. Okay? And so the fighting that goes on in the inner cities around the country, they take some of the kids who have better records now. Because it used to be you could go to the military if you had a heartbeat. Mm-hmm. But then they start downsizing and saying, no, nah, you got to be a, at least a, a, a high school graduate with some aptitude. But you still going to go over and die. All right. That's still <laughs> you know, the bottom line. Yeah, yeah. But they're more selective now. Yeah, they hunting the smarter niggas. Yeah. They're like, keep the but, dumb niggas on the street. We'll get them eventually with the squad car. If you get a propaganda <laughs> to the proper goose, because they, 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 they attract you with, we're looking for a few good men. Look in the mirror. Is that you? Yes, that's me. I'm signing up. Okay. And then when you go through that military experience, because when I was in uh, the Navy in 83, 84, 85, 86, 87, they started messing with them people over in the Middle East, and I was in the reserves. And uh, So you didn't never go fight? Man, look, I was in the Navy uh, for four, six years, and they were sending people every six months all over the world, and I was playing tennis and basketball, and they got mad at me. I said, look here, y'all shouldn't have had sports teams. You know, mm-hmm. uh, because so, so you was on the bas- Navy basketball team and the tennis team. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> what? So, so you not the you was like the, the Naval Academy. See, even Forrest that, Gump went to fight. <laughs> no, bro. You didn't, didn't never get to fight, Bobby. Man, look here. I was in the Navy <laughs> and I went to sea for four hours. The question is, what? You didn't <laughs> never get to fight. Get to fight. Yeah. What for? I was playing basketball and tennis. What the fuck I want to fight Bobby, for? Bobby, don't tell nobody you was in the Navy no more, man. <laughs> Bobby, if I check your record and you that good soup cooking nigga on the ship, <laughs> I am going to motherfucking put that shit out there, Bobby. Oh. <laughs> see, that's the beauty about modern time, man. You can, you can, you can go and see for yourself. I was at, at NAS uh, North Island in uh, Coronado. Mm-hmm. The hell, I told it, I trapped myself over here. So y'all talk till I get unwrapped over here, man. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. All well, right. Bobby was in Cardinata. <laughs> Where uh, was he? <laughs> playing tennis. That's what I was doing. They flew this nigga to Cardinata to play tennis. <laughs> but he had a gun while he was playing. <laughs> Did you have a gun, Bobby? That don't lie. Uh, no, I didn't have no gun. What man. the fuck? <laughs> Oh my God! We don't want to hear no more, Bobby. I, I'm a, you was in the Navy. Just stay there, God damn it. They gave him a paddle. God damn it! This motherfucker was a weekend warrior, man. <laughs> God damn, man. <laughs> Testing. Uh, am I back? You good, Bobby? Am I black? Bobby, He's coming my, in and out. My who is that niggas you introduced me to when I was in Memphis that time? They was in the Navy with me. They was on ships all the time. So they ain't never fight either. Oh, they did some of everything. Yeah, they 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 take them out there. The question was, did yeah. they fight? <laughs> was they ever at war? Yeah, a couple of them were. Oh, yeah. okay. What, yeah. The ones I met. Yeah, big okay. black, big black was out there for twenty some years, man. Oh, okay. What about um Goldsmith, Rooster, all them, <laughs> all them motherfucking names. Fairgrounds, you there? Said, <laughs> this nigga said Goldsmith. Yeah, yeah, Goldsmith. <laughs> Goldsmith was that guy that looked like. Boy, that nigga was owned by some rich white motherfuckers, <laughs> boy. Mr. Goldsmith. I don't know, bro. Goldsmith. <laughs> boy, God damn, yeah, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, when we come back uh, after this we gonna, break, we're going to we let y'all talk back to us because we want to know what you think about the subject matter. So, what you say in two and two? In two and two. Oh, uh, listen at him. We'll be black. That's what up. I, I, I mean that, yeah, I mean that. Don't front, you ain't seen that, you ain't seen that. Where I bees at, I'm gone. Where the trees at, where the trees at, where the trees at. I need that, yeah, I need that, I need that, yeah, I need that. Don't front, don't front, just drop the top, stop and watch. Hot to death, then breeze the face. But no need to chase, tweak the pace, so I leave the race. Just ahead of the rest, better than most in the back of the class. Lead the pack, pull strings and tab. Love jazz, fuck Osta tag though. I'm supposed to have flow. Well, at least that's what they say. Yup, okay, don't know me yet, but I'm on my way. Stay fighting through the trenches, on benches, playing time was barren, still preparing. Tracks in the lab, now they stab something like OJ. What? No way. Got game, so I'm holding tokens. Born to shine, mind state is golden. Running guns, so I use no plays. 
They can't see it coming, now they're mad So fresh, I'm standing glad And reach for things I'm supposed to grab And I mean that, yeah, I mean that Don't front, you ain't seen that You ain't seen that, where I bees at I'm gone, where the trees at Where the trees at, where the trees at I need that, yeah, I need that I need that, yeah, I need that Don't front, don't front I mean that, yeah, I mean that Don't front, you ain't seen that You ain't seen that, where I bees at I'm gone where the trees at? Where the trees at? Where the trees at? I need that. Yeah, I need that. I need that. Yeah, I need that. One more hit, then ease back. E ease back, back. Need, need that, 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 that. Go on, ease back. Need, I need, 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 need that. Need, need that, that, that. E ease back, back. Need, need. Yeah, 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 yeah. I need, 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 need. I need to get a drum or something. Yeah, yeah. I mean one that. Day. Are we back on? Hunter Alexander is the artist. I like it. She need to call Bubba Prime and put some drums on top of that shit. I mean that. Yeah. Get your kids out the room. My dick is out. She gonna get it soon. <laughs> <laughs> I mean that. She's 17 and a half, six more months. You the bitch that's getting bucked. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, man. y'all let I us know what that. you y'all let us yeah. know what you think about it, man. I mean and keep that. sending us the music, Jim. Yeah. Hey man, we, we you know what, man? It's, it's like man, better, I think. It's though. like I always yeah. said, man. It's gems out there, man. It's yeah. guys who just don't have that big break. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. To be on MT fucking V, that yeah. bullshit. Man, All right. When we did, when we did wilding out. I just was looking around. What, the it's last the, time, yeah, just recently. Yeah, the one. They, when are they July, gonna start? July 9th, They supposed to start July showing. July ninth. Okay. And I was okay. just looking at the people in charge of shit. I was like, man, <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, a motherfucker. You can be as talented as you want to get on those major vehicles like that, man. Mm-hmm. Them motherfuckers is looking for a look. They are not looking for talent. Wow. Well, that's our fault because people need to quit uh, supporting that bullshit. But it's a good thing that there's places like Augusta, Atlanta, Milwaukee, St. Louis, Chicago, because that's how you continue to be able to maintain your personal integrity and still eat. But they that call is, that the Chitlin Circuit, right? It still is. Yeah. That's what they it call it. Yeah. And it's yeah. called the Chitlin Circuit because you're not on the machine, right? the dummy box. Mm-hmm. But trust me. I have seen the people in charge of choosing those who are on the dummy box. Mm-hmm, right. yeah. Well, I'm talking about MTV, yeah. the artists that they go find, yeah. mm-hmm, and they yeah. only looking for a look. Yeah. Right, right. So we back to the subject matter, man. These fans of yours, Corey, they have waited patiently, man. Let's see uh, what a number of folks got to say about some blacks in the Some people might military. be mad at me. Well, I, I don't know what to say about that. Man, you got some, some really interesting fans, and they love you to death, man. Let's see what So let's like. see what we got. We got somebody on the line here. Man, this is the 5150 show. This is Corey Hogan. Who there? It's Larry from L.A., man, on my way to Taco Tuesday. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> What's up, man? He going to fuck with these double them. Man, I'm going to the Savoy. I want to make oh, a Oh, man, nah, we don't need them getting no advertising. Uh, they ain't advertising man, with of, us. Uh, the great Paul Mooney. Man, these Negroes got their wake-up call. So you got to go back to O.J., you got Jordan, Michael Jackson, Cosby, T.O., Mike Vick, Barry Bonds. And to these brothers willing to step up to, to the plate and use that platform to really make an impact, they're going to keep on getting crucified in the media. If they really want to piss them off, they need to donate money to the Nation of Islam, every American organization, every pan-African organization. Um, then about the military, um, I had this debate a lot of times with my homeboy. And he, he brought up a good point. He said, you know, the military... He gave brothers opportunity who probably would have fell victim to the street. I'm like, okay, that's fine, and Danny, but here's the trade off. They come back with post uh Yeah uh, traumatic PTSD. syndrome. Yeah. Uh, PTSD. going back to the I think it was Desert Storm in Vietnam. You had brothers coming back with uh Asian Orange and brothers shell shock. And um I think Bobby, you talked about this a while ago. I think the quote went something like this a false reality is better than a hard truth. No, I, I can't everybody, take credit for that one. Everybody's just not cut out to be a warrior, man. You know, right. um, you're back against that wall. There's no game that they play to neutralize you. It's like, let me sl- let me slide you some money. But mm-hmm. once you get out of line, you know, they'll put you back in your place. Look at Michael Jordan. He thought, you know, uh, you know, he was the man. But that brother who owned the Wizards straight played him. He didn't even give him the team. I heard it. This Michael Jordan, this brother, when he left the NBA, what was it, 95, 96, or probably earlier than that, 
the NBA lost $10 million. So you telling me a brother who has a, a global impact to the tune of $10 billion, you can't use that platform? These guys got to take, pl- gotta take a, uh, a page out of my Muhammad Ali book and step up to the plate. Um, LeBron James, a couple years ago, he said something about, you know, he want to be like Ali. And I'm like, okay, so are you willing to sacrifice your endorsements? Like, are you really going to get out there and address these, these issues that's affecting the community? Until that happen, man, you know, them suckers just going to keep on getting crucified, Listen, man. Listen, they will, house, they will. Goddamn tacos, bro. Boy, they will slap. We appreciate LeBron the call, down. L.A. Yeah, we appreciate that call. He made some good points. Yeah, if LeBron oh, ever LeBron. stood up, they would yank Sprite. All the endorsements, they'd yank all that if he ever said something against the machine. That's yeah, just how it when is. When they were crucifying him, he he wouldn't say nothing against Mm-mm. the machine. Mm-mm. And I noticed that when they were talk. I, I mean, like, how could you not say when they were asking him questions about the fans? Because they have they have calculated, they, they thought of this shit to mm-hmm. try to put you on the spot. Mm-hmm. I just can't understand why he never said, look, you guys... Um, show the fans who are burning a jersey. You chose to show that mm-hmm. because there are a lot of fans clapping and cheering that I'm in Miami. That are happy but you're for not him, right. showing that. You right. you showing what you want the people to see. Right. It's your cameras. You you create the story. Right. So right now y'all ain't feeling me. So what could I say? So they don't report, li- they don't report the news. They create the news. They create the news, man. It's all a story, man. All those things get approved before they say it. Remember that. Well. All those things get approved before they say it. Let me say that one more time. All those things get approved before they say it. Right. Well, his, <laughs> so, yeah. he mentioned Muhammad Ali. A lot of people mentioned Muhammad Ali. And I'm biased because Jim Brown stood up for Ali when everybody else sat down. Mm-hmm. He didn't want to assemble a group of black athletes and said, the man said he's not going to war. And they put their careers on the line, all of them. Mm-hmm. And then Ali fortified that. By standing up in front of America and saying, "Look, y'all shouldn't have put this rule in the in the in the in the book that you can be a conscientious objector." Mm-hmm. He said, "The Vietnamese ain't done nothing to me, and I'm not going." Mm-hmm. And more importantly, and it deals with something you said a minute ago, Corey. It may be difficult, but it is possible to speak truth to power because Ali stood firm on his conviction. They stripped him of his titles, took mm-hmm. all his money, and he got it all back and more, and more without ever having to apologize for the stance that he took in defense of righteousness. And Look what happened and, to him and, and, and he didn't put this. nobody on the ass in the courtroom. Look, and, and remember this, really? and remember this, his stance jeopardized his family, their livelihood, and they stood by him. But not just him. We got to remember Frazier, that. Joe Frazier stood by him. Joe Frazier put bread in, in his, his pocket. pocket. Yes. And got his license back. He went to yeah. court and said, look at here. I ain't into this politics. Mm-hmm. This man ain't done nothing but got in my way of the fame that I want. So let him fight. But and we, other people stood behind Ali and it became a momentum. Right. He changed the direction of the war by speaking truth to power. So, so, but, so, but what so. I'm saying is, if, if look at the dynamic today. That's what that I'm man's saying. family stood by him. And this is what that. So please. It ain't like that point. now. Because I thought of it when you said Go that. Ahead. The beast mm. is very intelligent. Mm-hmm. Don't think that he didn't see that. Right. So now he has destroyed the family because your woman ain't going to stand by you whole shit nowadays. Ooh. Your woman is going to call them to deal with you on every issue she got with you. He has set that up to give her this hotline. They get these sisters the hotline to get that nigga either in check or out your house. Because that's your motherfucking house. I don't give a fuck if he bought that motherfucker. If you live there with that motherfucker, you have established residency. And residency established it to be what we said it is. Damn. (laughs) You're not going to have that shit like Ali. You're not going to have that shit like these motherfuckers where you got a family to stand behind you. Nowadays, wow. you don't have a family. You knew okay. how we raised you in slavery. You in right. charge. The sisters ain't part of the movement no more. And oh, I'm, I'm, I'm not. I'm not saying all, right. all of them. Well, please, I'm don't. saying for the most part, if you have issues with your woman, she gonna call the police on you. Y'all ain't gonna talk it out. Wow. Or she gonna put a case on you. 
Okay, let's go and see what the, the caller's got to say, Curry. Damn, okay. Let's see it. <laughs> who we got? What's up? Hey, yo, what up, man? 5150 show, who did? Hey, what's up? What's up, Corey, man? It's Mike from D.C., man. What's going on, y'all? What hey, you doing, man? What's happening? Uh, uh, what's up, what's up, Bobby? Hey, right. how All you doing, right. brother? Yeah, it's it, it, on the, uh, yeah, Ali on the Vietnam thing. I think yeah, a lot of people got left out. He also had Jim Brown was speaking up for him and Kareem. Mm-hmm. And I think I heard about Afonso was, too, and Sammy yeah. Davis Jr. And it wasn't just them, brother, and I wanted to get let you roll with that. Black people were... Still together back then. Man, they they, they, they knew that it wasn't just mm-hmm. a hero out there that they worshiping. They was getting their ass kicked too. And it made sense that somebody said, yeah. And that's why I want to uh, fast forward. And we're going to get right back to you, bro. The mere fact that you're sitting here, Corey, is an example that everybody ain't going for the bullshit. And you, you work on a regular basis. You have a family that you take care of. And a family that's behind you. So everybody ain't going for this bullshit. But enough people are that it looks like we can't win. Well, enough people who have a price. That's why I always say the black community is in trouble because we can be bought. The reason we can't be bought is because most homes, black, black, well, most apartments <laughs> have no leadership in that motherfucker. <laughs> the leadership is the police or social services wow. or or them them the motherfuckers who run your apartment. Wow. And they they man they they that shit was not like that in the sixties and the seventies. What do you think about that, Carla? Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. I was gonna go off a little topic. Hey, what's up, Corey? Man, I just had a shout out, man. I'm with, I'm with my special lady friend, man. We watching the Watermelon Heights, man. This is a hilarious movie. Boy, that oh, thing keep coming tell back. You I saw that movie one time, <laughs> yeah. and like I say, hey man, some shit you don't know. <laughs> oh, man. But I had I had a ball another, shooting that shit. I want to bring up Corey. How come like we never gonna have a, a regular black female who can hustle her pussy like Kim Kardashian? Because I own, the only famous Black woman we have on TV network is Oprah, the people on The View, and Cheryl, uh, Cheryl Underwood on The Talk. We never could have a fine-looking black woman that's, like, mocking at herself on TV. Because the stereotype says it's normal for a black woman to be hypersexual and hoish. It's sensual and sexual and provocative when the white woman does it. It's different. She's a different kind of commodity. And that's the stereotype. It's unfortunate. Yeah, they, I yeah because I was watching something on TV, man. And, and the shit just really, you know, if you watch the NBA Finals, you've heard this commercial. This, this bitch uh, uh, said, nothing, nothing, um, there's nothing like Friday without a homicide. You know, you know what oh, I'm it's a new about? television show. Yeah. yeah. What did yeah. she say exactly? She, uh, said, she said, that's about what it is. She's saying that. <laughs> It's Friday and it's gonna be some killings. I, right? Yeah. It's do you some know killings. that they won't let nobody black do that? Not glorify Hell murder. No. no not I glorify said, murder. And when I when I saw this shit, Dexter, I said yeah. they will never let a show like that. When I saw Hung, now that's the main one they ain't gonna <laughs> oh, never yeah, have yeah, a black yeah, show yeah. Oh, no, called yeah. Hung. No, no, no. Them no. white <laughs> motherfuckers will press the nuclear <laughs> button before they let that <laughs> shit go through. Fuck <laughs> 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 this shit. One more thing, Blow man. Like Paramount said, man, Studios. They, they never want to market a beautiful black woman. They need to take that fat ass black lady off them pastel commercials and that fat ass lady off them Popeyes commercials. Like we need to get some fine black women. To okay. Be All right. Now what's a, what's a fine black woman then, bro? To you. I'm ready, man. I I, I call. Uh, what's her, What's her name? That, that was on your show, Corey. Who? Um, uh, dang. What's her name? Is it Jordan? Um. Jordan. Claudia. Uh, what's it? Call your joy. Yeah, that's a fine black lady. Why they can't get somebody like her? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> hey, look at DC. We really hey, do appreciate man. the call. Why you put like, us like, on the spot with day. that motherfucker right there? But <laughs> yeah. hey, man, thanks right, for the call, right. brother. Yeah, I want to say this though. That brother has a point because mm-hmm. it is a formula to who they allow on television. Ah, it's not a coincidence that Oprah. And I just put it like this: a lot of the sisters that are given that spotlight mm-hmm. have a look to them. That hmm. Angie Mama look. Thank you. You know yeah. what I mean, Bobby. You talking about that I, I mother wanna... love look? That look. Yeah. <laughs> that's that look. Yeah. That Shirley off what's happening ass look. Yeah. <laughs> that's that. That's who they want to push out there. 
Ooh. Florida <laughs> off good times. Well, none of this shit a coincidence. Oh, Estorola. Right. <laughs> and I'm not knocking them sisters, but I want no. you to know when you came in the room, they were like, that's the one. Yeah. That's the one right there. Yeah. Who, who would be today's Estorola? Well, I, I don't watch a lot of TV. I mean, like, when Somebody I watch... Said precious. <laughs> yeah, Precious. That bitch won a Grammy. That bitch thinks she a great actress now. And this is a motherfucking uh, bitch who was uh, recruited by Nick Saban. <laughs> Pete Carroll. Right. Yeah. This bitch could have had a scholarship Man. to any major university. Man. And she chose to act, but... It's oh, not a coincidence. God. Who was the last? Look, let me tell you something, man. They gonna <laughs> always, they gonna always do that shit. And I, it's not for me to, to judge all to judge who looks mm-hmm. a certain way. I'm not doing that. But I'm saying when they book these roles, mm-hmm. they know what the fuck they doing, man. Right. Well, and um, that's true. Let's get to these callers, man. This, the lines are all full, man. And I want. I'm curious as to what people have to say on this subject. Hey yo, fifty one fifty show. Who did? Yo, this this D block. D block, what up? D block, is that what he said? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, D block. I'm here in Dallas, Texas, man. Corey, you gonna be here Thursday, right? Man, I'm gonna be there Thursday through Sunday, and I'm gonna tear that motherfucker up. What what what, oh, what venue? I'm gonna have to get another pity and bring another one of my side bitches up here. You know, it's always interesting when I see guys bring a bitch to the show, like on a Thursday or Friday, mm-hmm. and then they bring another girl to the show. I know the Saturday night, that's fine, bitch night. <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 that Thursday and Friday, they bring a motherfucker. Uh, Side piece. Ain't your mama bitch. The, the, the bitch, the bitch right. that really got their back. That's what I call her. The bitch, the bitch yeah, that really wants you. I'm bringing Angie Mama on, on Thursday. I got her to buy the cheese. I've been talking about you so much. She said, I'm going to get you them cookies. You're talking about you. <laughs> <laughs> the wolf foot. Right. <laughs> that, I, I'm, I'm, I'm observing. I watch how men do it. When they come see me twice, the second show they come to <laughs> is when they got the little cute bitch that don't give a fuck about them that they uh, running, breaking their neck, trying to get a drink. Wow. You want something else, baby? You want something else? Man, I, I just got to say, man, I appreciate the show. Zo, man, you be putting it down. I, even Bobby, man, you be putting that history on me, man. But, uh, Dude, like you hear people when they say uh, they ain't never met their father before, and how they found to say you ain't just like your daddy, yeah, you like your daddy. Like man, when I when I found out about you, Corey, you like that long lost big brother. I never, hmm. I never admit, man. That's a hell of a compliment. Like, yeah, stuff I've been a, saying yeah. all these years is like you said better than I could have. You put it all together just right, and I just want to say like you just really impacted uh, a situation I was in with this starter kit. Chick I'm with right now. Yeah. When you said that show <laughs> talking about where does your power come from right. in a relationship. I remember that. I was, that was a strong show. Yeah. Yeah, yeah man. That was deep, man. I was mm. going through a lot of stress and stuff and putting up with a lot of bullshit I normally don't put up with. Mm. And I just had to sit her down. And I told her, I said, I got this from Corey's show. And uh, when we missing in this relationship to get my power back, I'm going to have to be able to tell you you full of shit mm. when you full of it. Mm. I'm, mm. I'm glad. I'm glad that shit helped guide you to do what was in you to do anyway. Mm. Sometimes that's all we need is to just yeah. hear something that validates. I'm not crazy. This mm. motherfucker ain't treating me right. Yeah, <laughs> right. Hey, brother, that goes men and women. We appreciate this call from Dallas and enjoy the shows. Let's keep them rolling. Yeah, I want to. I want to say this also, man, about about shit like that when people say, "Oh, the shit you said," you know what I'm saying? It mm. was. It was what helped get me over. I, I say that shit about Minister Farrakhan. And anybody who've never heard Minister Farrakhan, you really need to listen to what he has to say because I never knew who the brother was. All I know is the media never had nothing good to say about him. Mm-hmm. But one day, them brothers who were selling them bean pies, you know, on the side of the road, how they do that in Chicago. I was in Chicago. I just bought one of them DVDs, and mm-hmm. it was one of the most impactful <laughs> Um, messages I ever heard in my life. Mm-hmm. And it's not like, I ain't got to tell you to go get one DVD in particular of the minister. Listen to what the fuck he got to say. You'll get addicted because you'll learn a lot of shit. Much respect to Well, minister and that's Farrakhan. the whole purpose is to learn. A lot of times people get, you know, enamored by the messenger and then they start following the messenger as opposed to the message that the brother is conveying. Right. And if you want to get some real game. 
listen to the brother objectively, learn, get what you can get that's uh, beneficial to you, then move on to the next situation and keep growing. A lot of people get stuck. Yeah, so. I'm smarter now. I even listen to some of these gay ass preachers. <laughs> just because just because they gay don't mean they don't know some shit. You know what I mean? In fact, they know a lot more shit than I know when it comes to shit. Well, uh, can we get back to the callers, man? <laughs> Them motherfuckers got dookie knowledge. <laughs> callers? Can't, we got any callers. We got callers. They know we how to, get to, callers. They know how to callers. wash up good than a motherfucker. If not, they'll get fungus on their dick. Okay. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. What else we going to do with the brilliant mind of Corey Hoke? <laughs> All we gonna stretch gay like preachers got hot-ass hot ass water at the crib. <laughs> they got hot-ass water. They got to. They ain't got hot water, they draws going to be not done right, got done. <laughs> it's a wonderful thing that Corey can stretch out further. That's than, a fact, though. They, uh, we know it's a fact, but we also know, man, that you have so much more insight that we're going to share try, with these people They're trying to tonight. put that in the code. If you're, if you're a gay couple, that's me, me, two men getting married, mm. uh, your house got to be up the code with the water heat. <laughs> You got to have Okay. Oh, all right, man. Come on. Let's get to the callers. God damn. Okay, okay Kira, who we got on the line? We got a caller on the line. Hey, what up? 5150. Who did? Hey, how you doing, man? It's Baby B24, man. What's up? Hey, what's Baby B24? Busy B. He say Busy B, Bobby. Oh, Busy B24. Okay. What's on your what's birth certificate? You? What's going on with you, Bobby, man? <laughs> Happy Veterans Day, man. Happy who? Uh, I want to say happy Veterans Day to you, brother. What is that? Veterans Day. Veterans Day. Oh, when was it? Yeah, you 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 were saying that you were, you was uh you were serving and everything like that, and then they had me rolling when they were talking about you uh you been in the kitchen making soup and shit. Yeah, no, was Bobby it? was a tennis a Navy tennis player. Man, look at that man, and damn good. It, it, it beat yeah, the hell out of standing yeah, there man. watching them play. I'm, 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 I'm not going. I'm not going to keep y'all too long, but I'm over here. I'm watching this uh, this heat game right now. Who you guys got? Who's winning to win tonight? Right now, it's uh, it's uh, forty four fifty. Uh, San Antonio's up right now. Uh oh. I mean, I want the Heat to win the NBA title, but what did he say the score was? Forty four fifty. San Antonio. Right now, man. Oh. Oh, okay, it's a ball game. Yeah, San Antonio's yeah. tough, and at home, um, this is this is a toss up. I think it's going to be about seven games. I think the Heat is yeah. better than um, San Antonio. It's just. The NBA is a um, but enter- entertainment league. It's an entertainment league. Yeah. If Tony Parker drives to the basket and jumps into you and the ref call the foul, it's going to be competitive. But if he jump into you and the ref don't give that foul, they're going to get blew the fuck out. <laughs> mm. Yeah, he stay on the floor, man. That man <laughs> stay on the floor more than freaking Magic Johnson be on the floor, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. More than who? What did he say? He said stay he on the floor. Stay on the floor more than Magic yeah, Johnson. Yeah, I, I mean, I've been listening to the shows right now. And it's halftime, and uh, they they showing uh, your boy uh, Will Bond and uh, and Simmons, man. And, you know, you write about them. Them niggas is moist as fuck, man. Can't you see it? You know. <laughs> you can see it's all over his face, man. Jalen Rose is, like, pissed right now. Like, man. These niggas. But that's how they train these point guards. You go in there, you draw the big out as far as he's uncomfortable. He's talking about that NBA. He talking and about then that. when he get that foul, that's that they, they train him to do that. No, but he talking about that NBA halftime desk where Jalen Rose got to um, hit him um, yeah. ball, the ball, ball breath bastards. <laughs> He got to sit right in the middle of them ball breath, ball, ball breath bathers. You notice they got him right in the middle too. You ain't gonna just, you gonna get all three ball breath, motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> so where you yeah, from, brother? Where you calling from? I'm calling from the Bay Area, man. Right now, or oh, whatever. Yeah, I'm out here. I'm out here doing it, man. I'm trying to survive out here, man. But yeah, true talking. What you guys are saying about the whole, you know, politics things and how uh, how people can uh, you can't voice your opinion about shit because. You know, when you real out there, they gonna take your shit from you. You feel me? That's why LeBron he's trying to be as quiet as he can because he knows, like you said, that Nike deal gonna go away, that Sprite deal gonna go away. You know, they can strip that shit easily, man. You don't want to be a nigga out there want. with a headline and like that and no money. Mm. Yeah. If mm. LeBron ain't had no money, boy, that motherfucker, boy. Can you imagine Bron- LeBron <laughs> uh, working for some moving company, <laughs> coming home tired than a motherfucker? <laughs> Uh, with a cap on, yeah, I'm on, I'm on a dicky cap or some shit. That headline will be really gone by the end. He, yeah. Uh, but anyway, that's thanks what they for the do. call, brother. We appreciate it, man. You, let's you, get him right, in. Y'all, y'all take it easy, man. Yeah, let's get him in. Who we got, Kara? Hey, caller. 
What up, Music Man 82? Representing that sound with clowns get beat down, and all you hear is gunshot sound. Oh, oh shit. All right. Put it down. Pretty good, Music Man. Pretty you thought of that by yourself? Shit, we should write oh, some yeah, more yeah. rhymes. I wrote that last night. I'm about to uh, submit some music. Oh, oh right. shit. Okay. All right. Okay. That's what but I mean. Hey, but anyway, man, on this uh, military shit, I don't know if you remember, like, back in, like, 2010 on the Foxhole, you had did a show about that and invited some military dudes on. I think you should do that again. Yeah, yeah, we had that one military dude on the show, and he was acting like he was loco or whatever the fuck, but... <laughs> I'm I like, think he was Mexican or something like that. Yeah, that was one of Darlene homeboys. Yeah, we well, yeah, to, uh, we're hoping some military guys call in today. Don't nobody want to really call in it. because they can't really say their name right. unless they ex-military. Right. Because, right. mm-hmm. you know, if they right. say their name, they'll get in trouble. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, they're going to get uh, yeah. that knock at the door. And then, and then, you know, another thing, too, man, uh, um, I just want to see what you think about. I ain't trying to change up or anything about Simp-ass niggas who act one way with their homeboys, and then when the female come in the room, they change up and agree mm. with everything she say to to get her attention and make herself look better than all the other niggas in the room. I just I just went through a situation like that the other two, like about two days ago. Mm. What do t- you think about that, Corey? Hey, man, look, music man, I'm going to tell you like this. This is how it went down. One day, it was this group it was this couple they used to have like different meetings at their house where they have women and men there and they just have people over talking Mm -hmm. about different topics you know in the black community Mm -hmm. and they was talking about um they was talking about men helping more around the house with with you know the things that the, the you know the chores and this motherfucking um, 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 uh, bullshit ass motherfucker stood up in the middle of the crowd and said, "Let me tell you something. All you men in here, if yo, I don't care if you post to work. When you come home from work, you check with your woman and see if the dishes and see if she needs you to do some laundry. <laughs> you are supposed to do that. That is your woman. <laughs> hey man, and have these goofy motherfuckers start clapping with him, man, because they was all trying to get some pussy, man. So with the way motherfucker." act around women it's not real yeah, yeah. so you can't even get mad man only men act like men right. all you gotta do is just sit back like like T.O. say get your popcorn and watch these pussy motherfuckers man <laughs> but you know what you know what's so fucking crazy about all of this if you take a motherfucker from 2013 a man from 2013 and place him right next to a man from 1900 they're as different from a fucking elephant and a dolphin. Why? Because technology changes everything. It rewrites the rules. So back then, oh, you need to be a strong man who can fix things. Well, that was the industrial industry, right? The industrial times, right? That shit is changing. And when information changes, so do social game rules. Motherfucker, this is why Detroit is broke. There was a time when everybody in Detroit had a job at a Ford factory somewhere building some shit. Well, when machines and automation comes in, that shit changes. They don't need you to build a car right. now. They got a robot for that, nigga. So all that all that <laughs> domestic Real life time. and Get your sweaty ass out my shop. <laughs> right. All that all that domestic shit, washing dishes pretty soon. That's going to be automated. Painting a house, that's automated. All of this shit that we put value on in 20 years' time ain't going to mean shit anyway. That's some real (laughs) shit. And when you're around a woman, men, please listen to me when I say this. When you are around a woman, uh, I'm just talking for real. That bitch is either going to promote you or demote you. Mm. If that bitch stay demoting you, you need to get the fuck away from that motherfucker. Because <laughs> mm. that motherfucker don't like your ass. Mm. That's mm. why she demotes you more than anything else. Promoting or demoting. That's what she going to do. Oh. When she around you, she going to promote you or demote you. What happens more? Do you get demoted more? You're out of here. Then that's a very serious problem. I mean, let me go deeper into this topic. When we talk about the automation and technological advancements, shit that used to be normal ain't normal anymore. The rules are starting to fucking change because technology changes. Here's an example. Back in the day, a a blue collar worker 
was somebody that worked in a factory. Right? You know who a blue collar worker is now? It's a knowledge worker. A nigga who is an IT person. Right? And that shit is shifting. Right? Because now jobs are based off the knowledge you have. You're a knowledge worker. The new blue collar dude is a knowledge worker. What do you do? I'm a lawyer. What do you do? Uh, I'm, a, I'm a computer technician. Your knowledge is the information, and that's the new blue collar. That's why the, the gap between the haves and the have-nots is getting fucking wider. So are you saying that's a bullshit commercial where they had that big Herman Monster-looking Mexican dude talking to that little bullshit-ass nigga with the baseball cap on, where he'd be like, do you know how much time you just make a phone call? And you can be doing this. You know you know how much time it takes? What, yeah, what does he say yeah, in that commercial? Yeah, it's a fucking... Hu- you know what America will do? So you said an electrician... Is on a limited time schedule. That degree you got as an electrician <laughs> yeah. is going to be played out soon. Is that Ab- what you're saying? Dude, absolutely. Do you remember the time when we had this big internet blow up and all these internet businesses and all of that? Microsoft was all crazy. And it was like, oh, become a certified systems engineer for Microsoft. M- Microsoft. Nigga, do you know when the fucking internet collapsed, all of the senior guys got the entry jobs. So all the motherfuckers in school getting Microsoft certifications came out and didn't and couldn't get jobs because senior dudes was in those positions because the internet shit cl- collapsed, the internet bubble. Well, shit, at the end of the motherfucking day, that ain't going to stop ITT Tech or DeVry from selling you some shit that's outdated already. That ain't going to get you no job. Let they me tell you a job, you that. a job that ain't going to never, ever, ever go nowhere. Selling puss. <laughs> now, long as as long as this pussy on this earth, it will be bought, <laughs> traded, uh, and taking at gunpoint, distributed. <laughs> wow. Pussy is the only job you mm. fucking need in this world, and that's why they don't want niggas to assist women in selling it because they know you will be a fucking millionaire if you know what the fuck you're no. doing. How do you tax pussy sales? Is it possible? Yeah. No, yeah. if it was possible, they would do it. They, they do would it, allow they it. They do it in, in Nevada. They what? got they got them houses in Nevada. Oh, yeah, yeah. They, yeah, they, yeah. What is that, you the ranch out yeah, there? Yeah. Wait, I got something for that, too, Bobby. What? You know why <laughs> they let them do that? Because ain't no niggas in Nevada. <laughs> <laughs> Not out there. <laughs> They'll be like, well, shit, we can legalize shit out here. I think I seen about eight niggas out here. <laughs> <laughs> shit, people yeah. can have fun out here. Okay. Ain't no nigga out here, but if them niggas move out here, goddammit, they'll the shut all that shit yeah, down. Yeah, yeah. All right, we got to take a quick break, and then we're going to uh, close out, get to the, the callers. callers on the board. Yeah. yeah, we'll be back shortly. 
right, 5150, we like this beat. We like this beat so much, I wrote a song to this motherfucker. Whoever made this beat, get with me. And we gonna flip this bitch. Corey Holcomb on the track, check it out. She say the pussy free, but she wants some money from it. She say the pussy free, but she wants some money from it. She say the pussy free, but she wants some money from it. This bitch think I'm a motherfucking dummy. <laughs> say the pussy free. Pussy free. Pussy free. Pussy, 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 pussy free, but pay me. Motherfucker, pay me. Ah. <laughs> That's okay. We'll rock that motherfucker. She's a pussy free, but she wants some money from me. I hate Damn. when girls do that shit. No, I'm not charging you for that <laughs> pussy, but you just helping me because you my friend. <laughs> <laughs> bitch, I'm giving you some money because I hate you, bitch. I don't ever want you to speak to me again. <laughs> oh, no, no, I want no, you to no. go away right. after I'm through. Bitch, I am not your friend. That's why I'm paying you. You're not beating me, bitch. I know oh, I, my man. life is fucked up. I beat myself. <laughs> <laughs> oh damn! Okay. Whoa, All right, right. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna run through these uh these phone Jeez. calls like Sherman went through Atlanta. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's hey, do it. Yo, fifty one, fifty three. Hey, what bro, the fuck bro, you got to say? What up, man? Who did? Man, this is man, fuck the chat room That's style, Memphis. making even money, picking holes this style. You know what it that's is. Memphis, Get out of man. Out of Memphis, Tennessee, and this yeah. bitch. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Bobby knew that accent right man, away. Man, that's what he say, man, boy. That's Memphis <laughs> like a mother, man. What's going on, homeboy, down there on the south side, man? Man, niggas killing and they killing, getting locked up. You know how it is. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, you yeah. ever served in the military? Uh, no, I did, but I did want to talk about that pussy ass shit. Um, Go in. To the folk, to the folks in the military, we appreciate y'all because without y'all, we would have had these dope and these dubs we had now. <laughs> <laughs> it's, all of, it's all part of America plan, man. It's all part of America plan. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Oh, that's some oh, real man. shit, goddammit. Them motherfuckers are fighting to keep this bullshit going over there. Man, that brother from South America for real, man. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Yes, that, sir. That's, that's Memphis, South America, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. That's yeah, South man. America for real, man. Hey, thank you, Memphis. Keep coming back at us, bro. For that's sure, what for I, sure. Man, All right, Memphis who we got on the line? Who we got on the line? It's your boy Carvel calling from South Carolina. Okay, SG in the building. South what up? Kakalaka. Yeah. What's up, man? Yo, Corey, I just wanted to holler at you, bro. I drove an hour and a half to Augusta and a goddamn monsoon to come check you out, but it's worth it, brother. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hey, man, that Augusta show was different, wasn't it, man? It was in a real nightclub. Mm. That's yeah, way that back. Was crazy. Like, it your was seats in the Cadillac. This was running because they weaves was wet. Was you was you at the show when it started raining outside and then the roof was leaking so it was raining inside? <laughs> yeah, that was crazy, bro. Man, them people. I was so glad when nobody sitting at that table looked like looked like God was pissing from the roof. <laughs> he was like, "What the fuck is that shit? It's raining in here." Yeah. Oh man, yeah, sound well, like the bucket of blood. Out, they had to ask, bro. That girl in the front who had the three kids. You got up with her after the show? No, I ain't get up with her. She was trying to get up with me, but I, I be seeing through the bullshit. She had that uh, the way her hair was set up, she hid. She had that uh, Lamar Odom um, tangerine type line. <laughs> that kind of threw me off a little bit. Now that's not no diss on tangerine. I think tangerine is bad than a motherfucker. I agree. I I'm just saying. But if tangerine was my woman when we got in that argument, I'd be like, who you talking to? If you don't get your uh, Jack and the Bean stalk head ass, <laughs> the fuck up out of here. Bro, I was checking the scene because I came out to the show and hollered at you after that shit. And I saw her like hanging around the stage. I was like, yeah, my boy Corey got this. Mm, yeah, wow. yeah, man. That shit was cool. It was a little different. I ain't done a show like that. Uh, in a while, where we was That's actually all at a night. The show was in a nightclub, not a comedy club. A yeah. motherfucking nightclub. Yeah. Wow. Wasn't no dancing afterwards. Mm -hmm. No motherfuckers was hanging around a little bit. And this was the first nightclub I've been in in a while that ain't had no wings. I was telling the owner, how the fuck are you missing that money, nigga? You better put some wings <laughs> in this motherfucker. <laughs> this is a black club, ain't it? What how did he have? That nigga had all <laughs> drinks. Oh, yeah, Lord. I don't hold the line up, bro, but I just wanted to tell you, man, it was rough to drive, man. I showed out. I had a fucking good time. I got, like, three hours of sleep for work the next morning. Mm. Oh, that's what up, man. I appreciate it, hey, man. Hey, thanks for coming in tonight. Thanks for calling. Uh, appreciate the call. Line. Yeah. That's what Who up, we got man. next? Who we got next? Who they what? Brian? 
Is this Brian, the guy hey. from last week? Mr. Hulk. Hey, what's up, bro? Mr. Smith, Mr. Williams. All right. All right, sir. I appreciate the show today, Mr. Williams. Good shit. Thank you, sir. Good shit. Uh, today, I have no idea what the fuck I want to talk about. <laughs> That's Man, all right, brother. I'd have done that shit when I called women before. I'd just be like, well, fuck it. Is you bleeding? I'm on my way. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I fucked around and got drunk. Oh, 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 this yeah. nigga keeping it real, too. Yeah, hey, I yeah. fucked around and got drunk. Right, it's all right. I fucked around and got drunk. I mean, uh, Zoe, your show was hot. Thank mm. you, brother. Yeah. Uh, Zoe, what was your topic today? Boy, we had two. I got you some shit so you can get some money. You did what? Back at me. Say that again. I said I shot you some shit so you can get some money. He shot so me. So don't roll your eyes at me, nigga. You shot me some shit so I could get some money. Well, uh, man, I, I shot your email. Like oh, you asked oh, an email. Oh, okay. Got it. Hey, I'm man, fine. this is what I want you to do, man. I want you to stop drinking right now. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to get you hey, some hey, baby oil. Hey, hey. Get you hey, some baby oil and put yourself to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Mm. Get you some baby oil and put yourself to sleep, man, and uh, shoot me another email. <laughs> 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 and that nigga drunk, man, a motherfucker right there. That nigga, that nigga didn't know what to say. <laughs> I think that nigga had a crush on Zoe. Oh, Lord. Hey, Joey, oh, I like your hey. show, boy. Let me how I let you know. All right, who we got? Who we got? Who we got? Stop who on the line? Around, who on the line? <laughs> 5150 show. Hey, who this? Man, this is Joe Bear, a.k.a. Trinity Boy, calling out of math. Oh, uh, what up, right. man? Boston, Massachusetts. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Yeah, just wanted to say what's up, what's up, what's up Bobby? Hey, what's up, man? Corey? What's up? You got it, bro. I got two quick points I want to make. You know, know they always say you like Richard Pryor, but you more like a, Corey, you more like a mixture like Robin Harris and uh, Red Fox to me. You know what mm, I'm saying? Mm, I'll okay. go with That's that. a compliment. That's Top a hell of a compliment. Line. Shit. The, line. the second point I want to make, this gay agenda thing. I know it's kind of off topic. Yeah. But... What they did, all that is, is to like kind of shy down the civil rights thing. Through Obama in office, to say so you can't say, oh, the black man can't get nowhere. Now and then, on top of that, you know what I'm saying? They push the gay agenda, gay agenda, gay agenda, because that kind of dims down like black rights, the civil rights, racism, all that other stuff. You know what I'm saying? I know y'all was talking about that a couple weeks ago, so yeah. I was just trying to touch on that. Yeah, well, that's what I, I yeah. agree 100 percent. Well, thanks that's for the they, call, man. Yeah. We we yeah. do appreciate it. We, yeah, shit. that's why they had Obama say, "I I don't see nothing wrong with a man." Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, keep Dick calling. jamming another man. <laughs> yeah, let's get him in. wrong with that. Let's get him in. Let's get him in. Donkey Kong that ass. <laughs> <laughs> Who we got on the line, Kerry? I'm Obama, and I approve his ass busting. <laughs> Who we up, got? Yo, this DP. What up, bro? What is that, DP? Hey, this is DP. I'm calling from Cleveland. What's up, Corey? What up, so, Cleveland? What up, man? Tonight. What's happening? What's happening? <laughs> hey, man, I missed out. I, I was trying to catch the, uh, catch the show earlier, so I missed the early topic. Messing around with this game, man. Uh, but I just wanted to call and uh, let you know, Corey, uh, we appreciate what you're doing out here, man, over in Cleveland. Man, I appreciate the love, man. I'm going to be in Cleveland. Yeah. Uh, um, soon. I don't know if it's July or August, but I look forward to going to Cleveland. Uh, I always have a good time in Cleveland, man. Yeah. They, I'm That's what's up, man. I well, was just you know, if it's in you said July doing, August. Thanks, brother. That's what up. Thanks for the call, okay. man. Because, you know, Jim is back in Cleveland now with the Browns. Jim Brown? Yeah, he's back with the Browns. Uh, as, a, as a consultant? Yeah. Okay. Is he personnel or just nah, overall he gonna, he business? he's going to do what he was doing for... Uh, What's that guy name? Uh, Holmgren came in there and lost his mind, and you know he he turned everything around. But anyway, we're gonna keep these calls coming. Who we got? Who we got? Who we got? Mike Brown back for the Cavs, though. I tell you that. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, they're gonna get Mike Brown yeah, back. They should, they should the have never let they, they should have never let him go, man. That's the best thing that, that Cleveland had. In the last 17 years. Is he the coach? Yeah. yeah. They've been there. Yeah. yeah. They, they hired right the here. brother back. Yeah. yeah. For That's, more money. I want to say to Kobe, bitch ass. <laughs> nah, motherfucker. <laughs> Kobe motherfucking got that man fired, yeah. rolling his eyes at him. Yeah. Same way his bitch rolled his eyes at him at home when he show up. Yeah. <laughs> 
Hey. Bubblegum ankle having ass. <laughs> <laughs> I said that shit. That, boy, these bubblegum love. They Lakers out here. Come on now. Yeah. The Lakers don't love them. Hey, hey, that hey. Show. Hey, enough Lakers. Uh, yeah. The White okay. Howard going to leave. He's gone. Fine. He's gone with the wind. Oh, we got another call on line, Kira. Who we got? Who we got? Hello? Yeah. Look, I don't take too kindly about what you said about the military. <laughs> oh, shit. Even if he's talking like this for real, it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just playing. This is the music Rat 82. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was Jeff Brown. <laughs> <laughs> Travis Bickle. <laughs> that motherfucking voice had me rolling from the show. <laughs> I thought it was Billy Bob. I got Kevin Hart with that voice. <laughs> <laughs> one, day, one day I was doing a show with Kevin Hart, and he was, uh, he was I saw him walking out the elevator. Yeah. And he was saying goodbye to uh, one of the other guys who worked with him. I said, yeah. hey, why don't you niggas get out the hallway? <laughs> <laughs> we don't take too kindly to your type around here. Man, that motherfucker, Kevin was, Kevin was trying to kick my hotel door in. Really? I said, this little nigga got hard. He don't oh, know who behind this motherfucker. I was, I was charging him up. I was like, that's just like a nigga to be kicking on the hotel door. <laughs> hey, boy, Kevin was trying to get through that door. <laughs> <laughs> and then oh, security came upstairs, and when they it was some black security dudes, they saw it was Kevin, and they was like, "What the fuck are you doing?" And then, you know, Kevin was like, "No, this racist motherfucker behind the door." <laughs> this motherfuckers kept knocking on the door. I went for over that door. I said, "Boy, y'all got to kick this motherfucker down." So I opened that door. Kevin. So then, when Kevin got to his hotel room, the dude was still knocking on my door, just trying to see, cause Kevin was out there. He said all oh, this racist shit. I got on the phone with Kevin. I say. Oh, you old trick ass motherfucker. You tell it on the racist motherfucker. <laughs> this is my room, motherfucker. Kevin couldn't do nothing but laugh. <laughs> okay, who we got? Who we got? Who, who we got? Music who man, what's cracking? Hey, uh, shit, I'm, I'm replacing Soul Wonder as the next motherfucker to get roasted in the chat line. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, yeah. so, I, wait a minute, I just thought about that. Soul Wonder ain't been calling, has he? Yeah. You, what happened? Well, I, to his I credit. I'm going to challenge him. I said, I'm going to be the one that's going to get in. And I'm going to get in twice tonight. Yeah. Two and well. all. Somebody came down on Soul One, and this is what black folk got to hurry up and do better by. This brother was inspired by talking to a music man. He took his first uh, instrument lesson. He's, learn, he's learning how to play an instrument because, you know, he wants to produce music. Who that? Uh, Soul Wonder. Soul oh, okay. Wonder. He's, he's working on his craft, and somebody went off on another thing. And uh, we don't have nobody, man, when we try to put somebody down to try to come up, man. So congratulations, Soul Wonder, man, for getting your music on, man. All right. Dude, uh, yeah, yeah. Cool, ain't, Bobby. No, ain't, no, ain't no hard feelings, man. No, you're the one inspired him because you're a real musician. That's why he yeah, called himself yeah, music, man. Yeah. Well, you know, what, I, um, I played with Jill Scott. I played with Raheem Devon. I've, I've toured around with a few people, so. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Jill you know, Scott gave you that pussy. He got quiet. <laughs> <laughs> I heard she passed uh, that pussy out. Nigga. Oh, boy. What? Hey, man, thanks he for getting back in, man. We're going to pick up no, no, some no more problem. calls. No problem. He yeah. let me. Oh, boy. Who we got on the line? Who oh, we got God. On the line? If you don't <laughs> sing that shit, nigga, I dare you. I dare you. I dare you. <laughs> da, 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 Get your Ronald McDonald face ass out of here, Bill Scott. That nigga. <laughs> he fucked. <laughs> he ducked me. <laughs> he struck me. <laughs> <laughs> Shut the fuck up, bitch. Oh, With your beautiful boy. voice having that. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> oh, I'm just talking shit. shit. I'm a big fan of Jill Scott. She Jill Scott, don't now. you be mad She's at me. She's sassy about it. Got a hell of a band, too, man. But what she would you say if you got an argument with her? I always, whenever I see people, I always say, what I'm going to say if I get an argument with her? I don't know. I wouldn't want no drama at this point. Get your line, line back a bit ass the fuck out of here, Jill. <laughs> As soon as I get in that argument with you, oh, as soon as I look at you, I'm sorry you up. <laughs> what up? Who this? What's going on? This is Jerome from Toledo, Ohio. Oh, Toledo. Toledo. Yeah, man, Toledo fucking with you, man. Hey, man, you know I'll be out there in Toledo soon at that little club. Oh, uh, yeah, out there at the, with, with the funny bones or the, something? Yeah, the, with that restaurant with that good-ass food, that fish, fish, what is it called? I don't know. That brother knows. Fat fish blues. Yeah, yeah fat fish blues, man. Fat that fish motherfucker blues, got some huh? good-ass food in with there, catfish man. and shit like that? All kind of shit. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Well, <laughs> tell me. Asian shit, something. Yeah. Like Asian food. What's something. happening yeah. in Toledo, man? What's uh, going on? Talk to him. It's all right when you're drunk. Oh, that's what I uh, hear. Oh, drunk. man. 
Ain't nothing doing going on now in Toledo, man, but a lot of killing, man. Niggas need to stay out the way right now, man. Wow. Go ahead and get your money on the low. Mm. Wow. Hell yeah, man. All right, man. We sure do appreciate that call, yeah, man. man. We got to get them in before we got to get out of here, man. Appreciate that, Toledo. I, I will say, though, Jill Scott is one of the finest motherfuckers. You think she's world. Yeah, you think she's, she's beautiful to me. That's yeah. why That's why everybody, that's why I say it's everybody. Awesome. Beauty's in the eyes of the beholder, right. man. Right. She's she beautiful. beautiful. I tell you what, that's a talented sister. When she did that show in Africa in Botswana, <laughs> the, uh, the detective, that sister got down, man. Somebody yeah. just said she in the chat show. room. Jill Scott look like Jerome Bettis. Yeah. <laughs> okay, All I'm saying is Jill Scott come out the bathroom and some flip flops. I'm going to have to pop one of them blue dolphins. That cankle throwing me off, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> All right, do we have somebody on the line? Because we got we got about three more minutes, Fuck man. Fuck them. Yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> 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 them your people, Go ahead, man. man. I'm talking shit, man. 5150, who there? 5150, who there? Yo, this is Isaac from Milwaukee, man. How y'all doing? All right. Wow. What's up, Walkie? Hey, good. Hey, I wanted to, um, I'm an ex-veteran. I'm a veteran, actually, so that's why I was calling in. Mm-hmm. Trying to get in real quick. But I wanted to say this, too. Uh, Bobby, man, I'm 100% appreciative of you being part of the show. It's, it's very important, I think, for a lot of uh, young black men to have a, a elder figure a lot of us didn't get. So, mm-hmm. yo, that's that's dope that you on the show. Furthermore, with the military... Uh, that's the dopest way of calling a nigga old I ever heard in my life. <laughs> <laughs> no, because no, real talk, I don't, you know, a lot of us lost, lost a man in the family to the system, whether it be prison or death or whatever the case may be. Mm. So me, for example, I, I never met a grandfather. Mm. So to see three brothers sit down and talk like y'all in mm. that capacity, mm. a lot of us didn't get that at all. Right. So when you talk about men being raised by women mm. in the way a lot of them are now, it's contributed. And you guys are, you know, you guys are, are putting the balance out there with that. Man, man, I like that call, man. man. Really, and, uh, and and props to Corey, man, for appreciating a, a different perspective and allowing me to sit here, and then Zo do what he do, and and the fact that you recognize that it means a lot to me, and I'm I, I won't speak for me. So thank you, brother. Right, man. So thank you, dude. That's Seriously, what up, man. Thanks for the call. Um, uh, are, we, are we gonna get another call? Yeah, on? let's get another one. Yeah, in. we got five minutes. Fifty one. Go fast, nation. Yeah. Who did? Who this? Hello? Yeah. yeah. What up, brother? Oh, man, my bad, bro. I didn't even, even think y'all heard me, man. I, I'm just a long-time listener, man, first-time caller. Uh, shit, man. Corey, you know what I mean? You you one of the best out there, man. You know what I mean? You came to my city uh two weeks ago, Columbus, Ohio. Oh, yeah, that shit was live. Mm. Yeah, man, representing out there. And uh, you call it the Ratchet, uh, the Ratchet Mall, man. The Ratchet Mall is Eastland Mall. Yeah, that's you know where I went. Eastland? Not you went to East End. East End? No, I went to Eastland. Mm. Oh, where they yeah, had the twerking Eastland, contest. Yeah, yeah, yeah mm. bro. That's all <laughs> the rap twerk man. <laughs> Niggas be getting shot around there and shit. Mm. Yeah, them motherfuckers had, like I said, I knew it was the hood mall when I saw Foot Action, Foot Locker, <laughs> Champs. Um, <laughs> Lady Foot Locker, right. Kid Foot Locker, all of them. It was, it was, the, it was the Nike Nike Mall. Mm, 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 <laughs> yeah, mm. man, yeah, man. You can't, you, you can't be flossing too hard around that motherfucker. Mm. Oh yeah, it's wow. good. You know, we, we yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, watch, and, and, watch, watch this phony shit. Well, God got something good for me. That's, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's what. Hey, I'm, uh, man. Columbus, we're gonna try to get one more call in before we have to get out. Of. Thanks so much for the call, bro. Last caller. Where you at? Hello. Talk to us. I'm out of Atlanta's ATL. Kong, how y'all doing tonight? All right. All right. All right. Good, man, ATL in the house. Cool, cool. Yeah, I saw you in Atlanta, Kong. We tore it down, man. You're good. Thanks, brother. Everybody sleep on Blue Flame Amateur Night with the strippers, ain't they? You ever been there? Yeah, I, yeah I've been through there a couple times, man. It's pretty live. Yeah, that shit is nice, dog. Them bitches would do yeah, anything to get on stage. I just, a, I just had a quick comment. I just want to chime in on about the military. Mm-hmm. Go ahead, bro. I had a buddy of mine, he was in the military, and he was saying the CIA moving more heron out of that country than he ever seen. He said they'd be having, like, like crate full of just heroin and cocaine moving back to the States. And he said they can't even look at it, they can't even touch it. He said it'd be straight to the CIA. Well, they got to pay for the war some kind of way. 
Yeah, that's what I mean. War is expensive, man. Nah, but shit. that shit, we, we appreciate that information because we believe you, my brother. <laughs> shit. God yeah. damn it. We know the United States ain't finna motherfucking miss out on that paper, god damn it. If you think they don't sell drugs in this <laughs> motherfucker. Yeah. How, how, I want to say this, though, about heroin. Did I pronounce it right? Yeah. Heroin. Mm-hmm. Some people call it heroin. Heroin. That's what we call it in yeah. Chicago. Yeah. Yeah, that yeah. nigga right there, he, he got to be up. That nigga got a heroin. 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 Yeah. Yeah. yeah that, that heroin. Yeah. That's a, yeah. a bad motherfucker. To destroy Can you be in a relationship with a girl on heroin? Not really, man. What Not about really. a dude on heroin? Not really, man. Because you ain't going to have nothing in the house. I just saw that movie Sparkle for the first time. Oh, yeah. That was hey, man, a, that which shit. one? The old one or the new the one? The old one, not yeah. that new bush. Yeah, anyway. yeah, yeah. Hey man, I, hey man, I was laughing so hard, man, because it's a movie, so you can laugh at this shit. Mm-hmm. He met the one girl, the the, the tall singer bitch, uh, and was speaking to her, and then the, the woman he was with said, "She coming to the party with us." The big tall pimp dude or yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That motherfucker said, uh, escort her to her car. <laughs> and he, he walked out in the hallway and took his mink back and punched it in the stomach. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, I know that bitch yeah, she said yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> anyway, yeah. Dallas, Texas, you know what's up. Addison Improv is going down this week, Thursday through Sunday. Corey Hokama, be there. Yeah. All right. Here we are. Second week of Real Men Don't Play in Effect. If you haven't got your copy, please do so in the immediate future. Go to realmendon'tplay.com, or you can go to iTunes and step your game up. And in another two weeks, we're going to make it interactive. It's going to be some exciting things happening on that site. And, and, so Real Men Don't Play. And get with me at, at Glanton Smith on Twitter. And, and interestingly enough, I'm going to be in Dallas on Thursday, too. Thursday wow. and Friday. I'm actually going down to the Steve Harvey uh his big ranch he does this year annual thing steve harvey mentoring weekend you're gonna sweep that hair up it's gonna be all over the place <laughs> it's 120 families that are you know single women head of the household uh children are in trouble and he brings a whole bunch of men from all over the uh the country to mentor these kids my team has put together a pamphlet on dating for teens um uh a modern speaking no, uh, I'm moderating a, a discussion with Steve Harvey, and we we doing this whole thing, man. This this Thursday, I'll be down there putting it down. So follow me on Twitter at Zoe Williams. Call me while you're in town if you can come up to the to the show, goddamn. Hey, you nigga, I'll fall many, through. That's what I, you can see how many 5150 fans be at these shows. Yeah, let me brother. let me duck through there and see what's cracking. Addison I will call you when I'm there. You know. All right, so it's gonna be a real weekend down there. Anyway, that's absolutely. What, uh, hey, we appreciate y'all listening to our little puss ass show. <laughs> uh, all the military people that I pissed off. Um, I'm sorry you're mad, but um, you know, I wish we could have had more guys on. Where we right. can hit eight points. Right, right. Well, we're gonna keep it fresh and, and exciting from week to week. And uh, again, Corey, thanks for the opportunity to sit between two brothers that's holding it down, and we're just gonna keep doing what we do. Okay, Absolutely. military guys, y'all keep killing them, baby. <laughs> 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 <laughs>